Hello, welcome to 24th episode, that is October episode of Curiosity, the monthly science show presented by Young Academy of India. This is the October show, so, uh, you know, we had a very interesting month uh, of September. Many things have happened. So what moved the world of sciences? And uh, yeah, so what to look out for in the month of October? There are several meteor meteorite showers, you know, so that uh, let us see that. And, and also the space week, I'm looking forward to it. And what did I learn in the last month? That is what the a quick recap. Uh, you know, the Netherlands, the country, the Holland, isn't it? Amsterdam being the capital. Uh, it gives a Canada 20,000 tulips every single year as a gift. You know why they're doing that? Uh, as thank you note for protecting the Dutch royal family during the World War II. See how interesting gesture it is. I never knew that. Uh, very interesting, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so gratitude is really important. Uh, you know, to, to take in our lifetime as well, isn't it? So uh, another thing which I learned is that the cigarette butts were designed such a way that uh, there is a chemical reaction is happening when, when the smoke is coming through so that its color changes. So it is again, that is just a, uh, it's a, it's a kind of a cheating, isn't it? The people think that, wow, the poisonous chemicals of the smoke gets removed when you smoke through the filter, but that is not what is happening. It just changes the color because of the chemical reaction. Uh, the toxin, whatever, uh, you know, nicotine and other uh, carcinogenic things in the, the cigarette smoke reaches to your lungs, even if it is uh, having the filter or not. It's, it, it's immaterial, you know. So that is also I learned it for the first time. And by 1900, you see, 1900 is more than uh, one century back, isn't it? In the New York, one third of entire car were electric. I never knew that. It's a it's a fascinating story, isn't it? And now that we are making a slow push towards the e vehicles, right? But way back in 1900s, one third. But somehow that uh, you know that the trend has completely changed uh, with this uh, internal combustion engines. You know, so there are several conspiracy theories going on that there is a push by the oil industry. So I don't know what to take or not, but still I find it very amusing to see that in 1900, one third of taxis flying in uh, New York City were electric. And another very interesting thing is that the Mexico is the only country to protest the annexation of the Austria by the Nazi Germany during the World War. The Hitler's Germany completely annexed the Austrian emperor, isn't it? So the Mexico protested it. And as a thank you note, just like the tulip, Austria has a place named after Mexico. It's called Mexico Plads. You know, it is basically a town square in the Vienna. I've been to Vienna uh, two years back, you know. So it's very interesting to note that. Again, it's a, it's a gratitude gesture. And another very interesting story is from New Zealand, which I heard first time. So two high school students in, uh, in Auckland, so what they found is that they, they analyzed the advertisement claims of these commercial juice brands, uh, which they say that, uh, you know, the black currants in uh, Ribena have four times the vitamin C of oranges. So, you know, that uh, brand claiming that four times of the vitamin C comparing with the lime or orange. I mean, you know, the, the uh, it's preponderance of the propaganda, isn't it? Advertisement is everywhere. And uh, these brands... In the TV commercials say that if you drink just one glass, you will get the power, the vitamin C of uh, four or five lime. So they tested and they found that it doesn't have not even a trace of vitamin C. Look at that. It's a high school students project. Then they filed a PIL with New Zealand court. And what they, they found is that the court fined the company New Zealand dollar of 217,500. That's a massive fine, you know, that works in New Zealand. And why not? If it works there, it can work rest of the world as well. You know, so scientific literacy is really important. That is kind of missing in uh, everyday life, isn't it? So we should keep on questioning uh, this kind of false propaganda of uh, politicians as well as the, com the, the advertisement, you know. And uh, yet another thing which I learned is, of course, you know, I'm looking forward to the James Webb Telescope. Uh, you know, it is a precursor or predecessor 
to the uh, you know the uh, hubble space telescope of course hubble itself is a satellite isn't it it's, it's of course it was a uh, it is still in operation the, the space telescope james webb is the precursor it is much larger almost eight times larger than the hubble and it is based on the infrared you know and it's soon to be deployed in the rocket launch fingers crossed all the astronomy fans around the world uh, don't want anything mishappening happening on that launch you know uh, i don't think it is manned it's completely unmanned rocket uh, scheduled to be flown on 18 december uh, i mean just two months from now it's, it's basically a joint venture of uh, nasa and canadian space agency and esa european space agency you know and yes yeah, so the james webb looking forward to it but by the way what i heard is the james webb he was a military officer and there is a lot of controversy about naming it as a james webb a telescope uh, the reason is that the james webb has been accused throughout his lifetime as anti gay and anti homosexual uh, which is not ethic right a ethical isn't it in the current dimension so there are a lot of opposition and nasa is now reconsidering naming of the telescope you know so yes yeah, so the the people's legacy changes and we really have to look at that how the person uh, ethical and moral behavior has been right hubble tel space telescope is there is no problem with naming it as a hubble because the hubble is a famous scientist who first proposed that the universe is expanding you know the hubble constant and uh, yes hubble is, uh, itself is looking for the expansion of the universe so as james webb too james webb is also going to look uh, on astrobiology related that this in search of life on uh, exoplanets and exomoons you know so we are looking forward to it and what are the last month's major discoveries at a glance so mrna cancer therapy now in human trials after shrinking mouse tumors that's very exciting piece of story mrna is the most successful covid-19 vaccine too isn't it the moderna vaccine the number one in the world is an mrna based vaccine so that uh, covid-19 uh, the research push is also we are uh, you know the the rest of the domains of our life is also getting benefit from uh, what moved the sciences during covid-19 crisis especially with the mrna vaccines you know and the cancer therapy too breast milk of vaccinated mothers contains a covid-19 antibodies that's exciting piece of information you know so if you vaccinated and if you became a mother so your uh, you know the baby is getting that antibody through the breast milk fantastic isn't it female police officers are less likely to search a car during the traffic stop but more likely to find contraband when they do it so they are really very nice and heuristic isn't it female officers are really smart uh you know they they outsmart the male uh, counterparts isn't it there are multiple research in past as well that shows that the female doctors are unlikely to commit mistakes especially the intricate surgeries and also the female drivers are less likely to uh, to you know to uh, get in the fatal crashes very interesting so many things we are learning about the uh, you know gender uh, differences in human behavior isn't it yet another very interesting story which i read is that criminalizing prostitution increases the risk to the sex workers and makes it harder to stop underage prostitution and sex trafficking you know so that is uh, the problem with the criminalizing the prostitution in places where it has been decriminalized and the study shows that decriminalizing or legalizing prostitution is way to go uh, next is about suicides you know the suicide of course there's a big problem everywhere isn't it so suicides among men decreased after viagra became more affordable in sweden uh, the affordability of viagra is because the patent you know the patent is granted for certain years and when it gets expired then of course it's no more patent so generic viagra is readily available in the market in 2013 i guess yeah 2013 and when this patent is gone so generic cheap uh, alternative of the inexpensive alternative of viagra is available in the market suicide rates of men substantially reduced in sweden so you can guess the reason for 
you know the the suicide in men you know the sexual dysfunction very interesting story uh, from scandinavia next is about the children so children of today will live through three times more climate disasters than their grandfathers two generations ahead that is what the study says so today's children will see more and more dramatic changes in the because of the climate change even that's happening right every day like the the, the flash floods or extreme rainfall and drought uh, you know the, the increasing in the sea level everything is now like daily affair is it daily news it's no more cuts into the the front page of the the newspapers around the world so that is really important three times more likely covid-19 vaccines show no signs of harming fertility or sexual function very interesting there has been uh, you know the studies that says that the covid-19 reduces the libido in the men if you get infected with covid-19 you know sexual dysfunction in men while that is right but there is no problem with the covid-19 vaccine you see so the novel coronavirus in contrast can disrupt both things in unvaccinated men and women that means fertility and sexual function so get a job it's really important uh next is about cryptocurrency bitcoin a single bitcoin transaction generates the same amount of electronic waste as throwing two iphones in the bin that is what the latest study says so there is a huge environmental ramifications on cryptocurrency trading so there is a term in investing called ethical investing so investing in companies that are good uh, with your uh, whatever the value or virtue system which you are following for example if you are anti climate change so the climate activist then uh, you would refrain from investing in companies and stock markets buying stocks of fossil fuel industries or coal industries same way if you are you know if you are environmental uh efficient you no know, if you if you do care for the nature stop investing in bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies you know that is what the, the latest study points out to study of 486 families finds that essentially no influence of adoptive parents on adoptees iq that is intelligence quotient in adulthood so that provides further evidence that uh you know the genetic uh forces predominantly determine the iq and intelligence you know so it has been uh confirmed by so many uh, very evidences you know so many studies that iq is determined by uh the the genes but still a certain uh, you know certain aspects of the intelligence is determined by uh the environmental factors including the epigenetics you know so we really don't know how much percentage but majority i would say is determined by the genetics that is what the uh, this new study with n486 points to next is chickens bred to lay bigger and bigger eggs that has led to 85 percentage hence suffering breast bone fractures so you know it's a give and take right so it's a zero sum game and because of uh, uh, you know the humans fascination with bigger and bigger egg the hens are suffering you know so again that has ethical dimensions if you eat eggs i love eggs but i have to be concerned about this matter too you know so new discovered fossil footprints show that the humans uh, were in the north america thousands of years earlier than we thought Uh, to be precise 8000 years earlier than we thought so the scientists found that 60 human footprints between 21000 and 23000 years old you know the, the dating carbon dating so basically they dated uh, the uh, the seeds of that time and of course the, the footprints cannot be dated but seeds around that time can be dated so it's very interesting about uh, uh, the southern parts of the continent the new mexico and the southern parts Uh, during the peak of the final ice age that means the ice massive ice sheets have already been formed around alaska so they might be living there for uh, before the ice age has even began or how can you think that the human beings can uh, traverse across the massive ice sheet very interesting it's a mystery how they uh, they were there in the new mexico uh, you know 
around 23,000 years back during the last ice age, in the peak of ice age. You know, so very interesting, isn't it? So humans are known to perform well on when the reward is high. You know, if you say that, okay, I will give you this much money, then uh, chances are high, high that the person will do the task, right? And uh, the, you, uh, the, because the motivation is also uh, increased, even for simple tasks like questionnaire survey, if there is a reward associated, then, uh, you know, the percentage turn in uh, for this questionnaire surveys are dramatically high, you know. But paradoxically, when the stakes are really high, we perform disastrously. You know, like um, uh, like a lottery or in the casino, you know, the performance is very, very less if the reward is really high. So the new study has found that the same thing is happening with the monkeys too, you know, uh, like humans. Chalk under pressure, that's what. All these links are there in the show notes, okay, please have a look. And the next is about meats, non-vegetarian non-vegetarian food, right? So meats account for 60% of all greenhouse gas emissions from the food production. That's alarming concern, isn't it? So production of the meat worldwide emit 28 times as much as growing plants and most crops are raised to feed the animals bound for the slaughter. The crops are also for, you know, the to support the uh, this meat farms, you know, so... Yes, sixty percentage of all greenhouse gases of the food production. So that is a massive number. So if you are really interested to contribute for the climate climate change, uh, you know. So if you really want to mitigate uh, uh, the climate change or reduce your carbon footprint, the best step, the easiest step, would be adopting a, a vegetarian lifestyle or even minimizing the meat in your diet. You know that is what the repeated studies have shown. So new study finds that 40 minutes of vigorous intensity physical exercise every day is required to balance 10 hours of sittings, you know, uh, especially if you're an office worker. Uh, if you sit in, your, in, in on your uh, office, you know, on your office chair for 10 hours, then you need 40 minutes of rigorous exercise, high intensity exercise every single day. So what we need, uh, that means that we need to exercise a lot more than what WHO is recommending, uh, their uh, weekly recommendation, you know. And final story of the week is about uh, Mulu, you know, very interesting. I came across first through the, uh, the uh, Science Friday, I think, or the Naked Scientist, I don't remember exactly, but yeah. Mulu is the toilet for, uh, you know, cow. <laughs> Cows are getting this potty training. You might wonder what's happening there. You know, the cows are really important contributors of the greenhouse gas because they emit a lot of methane. And of course, CO2 too, but methane is really important. Uh, it's a potent greenhouse gas, but the study is not about methane. It's about its urine uh, because the urine can emit. I mean, the urine has ammonia, right? And what happens is the ammonia, uh, when it actually goes to the, the, the soil, of course, the free-ranging cow, they simply pee on the, the soil, isn't it? So the, the uh, soil have caught microbes. It converts ammonia to nitrous oxide. And nitrous oxide is third most significant greenhouse gas after methane and CO2. You know, so uh, that release of uh, ammonia directly into the soil is a significant factor contributing to the climate change. So they, they uh, toilet train through the reward you know, not the punishment, but the reward. Ah, there is a punishment also. Read out the story, very interesting. Punishment is a water spray of few seconds, you know, if you pee uh, outside. But if you pee on designated area where the, its urine is being collected for further processing, then you get a reward, you know, very interesting. And they could able to, they have the, the cows are really fast learners, you know, so you can check out that story. Uh, and of course, uh, we have further stories, so many of the stories, uh, we have a large number of moderators in the Facebook group, uh, Young Academy of India, you can search out YAI, Young Academy of India. Uh, please join the Facebook group, you will get a, a large number of curiosity driven stories like this. Coming next is observances, general observances uh, coming in October. 1st October is Older Persons Day. All these are UN observances, you know, Gerontology Day. Second is very important here in India. It is um, the Gandhi Jayanti, right? Uh, 
right? And also internationally too, it is non-violence, International Day for Non-Violence, UN International Day. For this day for habitat, habitat preservation, you know, uh, the environmental preservation. And also the fourth starts Space Week celebrations, uh, the week to celebrate the space missions and uh, everything concerned with the space and astronomy. You know, fifth is Teacher Day. Teachers like me, you know, and uh, many of the viewers are teachers. So it's an international day uh, to celebrate our occupation. It's a service industry, isn't it? We are giving a service to the humanity. I'm also this through this uh, curiosity. It's a, a mission of public education, isn't it? I'm educating others. Uh, yes, so let us learn together by comment and be part of our lifelong learning community. Young Academy of India is completely free. Ninth is Migratory Bird Day. The, the day to celebrate migratory bird. If you ask me which is my favorite bird, I have one answer, Arctic Tern. You know, in its lifetime, it, it, it you know, it moves from the Greenland all the way to the uh, Antarctica. I have seen Arctic Tern in Antarctica and back. And do you know in uh, 30 years of its lifetime, how long does this uh, Arctic Tern travels? It's just 160 grams, you know, it's super lightweight. It, it can, uh, uh, the, the cumulative, uh, you know, distance traveled is equivalent to three round trips missions to moon and back. Going to moon and back three times. Fantastic, isn't it? 160 gram living creature. Migratory birthday and ninth. Tenth is mental health day. Eleventh is girl child day. Thirteenth is disaster reduction day. You know, and 15th is Rural Women Day. Rural women are really important. Uh, you, you know, the women in general, if you increase their education, the entire family is getting benefited. So you can transform the societies if you target the women. 16th is Food, the World Food Day. 17th is Eradication of Poverty Day. 24th is Media and Information Literacy Week. And that also celebrates the birthday of the United Nations, the World UN Day. And 31st is World Cities Day. Cities matter, isn't it? And uh, observances of the astronomy and whatever the observance now upcoming, all what I'm going to tell you, you can see that with your naked eye or just with a low power binocular. You don't need uh, any telescope to see it. And, uh, you know, there is a fantastic app called Skyview. I can recommend any day. And this is a free app that can guide you to sport. So you can actually mark on to your calendar these events. And you can go uh, to your backyard and check out with the help of this app to sport these planets or uh, galaxies or whatever, you know. So it's a really interesting app. Yeah. And yeah, so 4th to 10th, I told you, it is the Space Week. You know, so this time, this year's Space Week theme is Women in Space, Celebration of Women in Space. Uh, you might remember the first woman in space was a USSR cosmonaut called Valentina Tereshkova. Uh, so she went about uh, Vostok 6 in uh, 1963, way, way back, you know. And uh, in India, of course, the first Indian woman in space is uh, Kalpana Chawla. She went in uh, 1997, uh, you know. Uh, she was born in India, but of course, she was a U.S. citizen when she went, you know. And uh, in her second trip, that was in 2003, uh, you, you know, unfortunately, she couldn't make the return journey because of the Columbia disaster, you know. So that is what. So it's a time to celebrate. We need more women in the space. Remember, not even a single woman set foot on the moon yet, till date. So I hope the uh, international space agencies will send women to the moon as well. And there are several meteor showers in this month. Fifth is Camelo Pardalid meteor shower. You know, tenth is Moon Venus conjunction. So you, in one frame, you can get both Moon and uh, Venus together. I'm looking forward to it. 14th is Moon-Saturn conjunction and 15th is Moon-Jupiter conjunction. 
18th is epsilon geminate meteor shower you know and 20th is the full moon day and this uh, october full moon is called hunter's moon you know very interesting i'm looking forward to that full moon day 21st is yet another meteor shower called orionid meteor shower and 24th is leonis minorid meteor shower very interesting name right leonis minorid meteor shower so by the way this meteor shower how what actually makes it because the, you know the planet earth moves around uh, the sun in its own orbit right and certain orbit these uh, you know these uh, 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 meteorites what we call are nothing but the the, the rocks and dusts uh, which didn't form the planets or the uh, the moon around 4 billion years back when the the earth formed you know 5 billion years back isn't it so these are like failed star dust and whenever the earth passes through that space you know in our solar system we think that okay the meteors are showering you know so that is why we can predict it so it's very interesting and uh, because of uh, a lot of meteor shower i've decided to go to kashmir in this month end uh, the the last week of october i'll be in kashmir and the viewers from kashmir uh, drop me an email we can catch it up right i'm just uh, planning to camp in uh, valleys of kashmir in the last week of october so and also the first of uh, november so let's meet up and next is opportunities we have several opportunities i've linked up the link please check it out it's a google sheet anyone can check it out and there is a link one click link to the application form uh, the, some highlights of the opportunities include Swiss government scholarship for the, the for PhDs in Switzerland and also Hong Kong PhD fellowship. DST Inspire Faculty Award is still, uh, you know, you, you can apply for it. Conservation Leadership Award and there are several NIH funds are available that is National Institute of Health. So check it out all these in the opportunities and the links are in the show notes of this curiosity. And uh, as usual, the YI, the Young Academy of India's Facebook page lists more exciting, uh, a lot of exciting curiosity-driven research news every single day. Our moderators are doing a good job. Uh, congratulations to all the moderators, including Mohabbat Singh and, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, yes, so everybody, <laughs> everyone is doing a, a great job uh, for this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, moderation of our group. So do subscribe to our group, yeah? Link for our page as well as all stories featured in this episode are in the show notes. So I will see you with uh, yet another episode in the November. So till then, please take care of yourself. Do wear mask and uh, uh, protect yourself and, you know, everybody around you, right? And see you soon in the, uh, in, after one month in the November episode. So till then, take care. Bye-bye.